My father is dead. Two years ago, he passed unexpectedly in the middle of winter, only 54 years old. He worked himself to death, I suspect. He was an archivist and wasn't around much, all things considered. Instead, his hours of careful research consumed his life until the end. A year had passed before I finally began sorting through his belongings and unfinished work. The most peculiar remnant was a nondescript trunk from his long-forgotten school days, tucked neatly and purposefully into a corner of the attic. But my father's school days had not been forgotten in the slightest. His gray hairs and frequent insomnia may not have been because of the concerns of adult life at all. What I began to learn was much more unsettling. The trunk was a catalog of notes, copies of classified documents, newspaper clippings, lab reports, and vintage photographs. My father had assembled a complete cold case file for the disappearance of one Bradley Yeldarb. They had both attended the University of Massachusetts Amherst, class of 98. The two were inseparable until Bradley's disappearance in sophomore year. Bradley never returned from his shift at Franklin Dining Hall on the night of January 24, 1996. The university made no acknowledgement of my father's cries for an investigation, apart from assigning my father a new roommate. No legal avenue was of any use. My father was blocked at every turn, met with incomprehensible legalese about how the information he was after couldn't be disclosed. Old red tape, they said. Nothing personal, they said. And so my father began to investigate on his own. He became consumed by his search for the truth. He flung himself into documents in the school's archive, documents about the history and leadership of Franklin Dining Hall. I followed as his search took increasingly bewildering turns, consisting mostly of documents that hadn't been declassified after the end of the Cold War. He had collected an astounding amount of information on the construction of Franklin Dining Hall, which my father became fixated on when he learned it had received federal funding. Classified lab reports from the Mass State College days, something about a discovery during the final years of construction on the Quapin Reservoir, which had been transported to the nearby land-grant university for further study. At the very bottom of the trunk, my father had supplied his own conclusion. There's something alive down there. Franklin is just the tip of the iceberg. I couldn't solve it then. Now I never will. I knew then that I would attend UMass Amherst. My father may never have learned the truth about Franklin, but I still could. It must have been fate that placed me in Wheeler Hall, directly across the road from Franklin. I ate there every day, became intimately familiar with the layout. It was older than the other dining halls, more compact and reinforced. It hadn't been renovated since its construction in the 60s. My father had said it was for fear of disturbing what was below. From my window, I watched the regular food deliveries at the loading dock. More food than a single dining hall could be using over that period, my father had said. As I learned every part of the building's schedule, I formulated my plan. I would wait in the secluded bathroom in a closed-off stall. I would wait until the building closed and go to the loading dock. For my father... I would come face to face with whatever was down there. I had to.
that dismal room beneath the earth was suddenly charged with an energy unknown to me. And I could sense a presence behind me. In the darkness, the terror under Franklin revealed itself. And it was beautiful. I must stop for now, my hand aches. The sun has set outside the reinforced window, leaving me with only the sterile glow of the single ceiling bulb. Its electronic hum provides a barrier between myself and the dangers of thought-provoking silence. They say I have to stay here in the land of the true lunatics, of sterile green paint and bolted down furniture. They will tell you I'm too dangerous to myself, that my ideas are too harmful to others. They won't listen. No one will. My business with the horror is not yet finished. I can no longer resist the urge to return. <laughs>